We're pretty sure we're not the only ones asking, what was the deal with 2016? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 WTF moments in music in 2016. Listen to beautiful music in stereo, or if you want to use one just to talk to Siri or make a phone call, it automatically routes the audio across whatever you choose to do. For this list, we're looking at the music stories from 2016 that made us wonder what the heck was going on with musicians, whether it was feuds, bad performances, or other bizarre behavior. I said something that was kind of politically correct. I told, I told y'all I didn't vote, right? Number 10, Taylor Swift versus Calvin Harris. After publicly saying he'd never collaborate with Taylor Swift, news surfaced proving that you should never say never. Turns out, she was a co-writer of Calvin Harris's smash hit, This Is What You Came For. In an effort to ensure their relationship would not dwarf the song, Tay-Tay's lyrical contributions were credited under a pseudonym, and her backing vocals were not acknowledged. Now the big question is, will you do a collaboration with your girlfriend? You know, we haven't even spoken about it. Anyway, no celebrity relationship can die quietly, so Swift's people revealed the truth after she'd split with Harris, and if Harris's subsequent tweets are any indication, he felt betrayed. What followed was a round of he said, she said, deleted Instagram pics, and snake emojis aplenty. Number nine, Birdman goes off on The Breakfast Club. So why come here? I did it already. I'm here, so what's that? Hip-hop radio show The Breakfast Club asks its interviewees the tough questions. Co-host Charlemagne the God specifically is famous for not holding back, and that's gotten him involved in beefs with various members of the hip-hop community, but none quite was like the Birdman incident. I wanted to come look you in your face like a man and tell you how I feel. Okay. You understand me? Straight up like a man. On April 22nd, 2016, Birdman visited the studio and before he even sat down, all hell broke loose as he demanded Charlemagne, Angela Yee, and DJ Envy respect his name. And y'all saying did, my name, put some respect on it. Did you, did you pull up on Ross that way or Trick Daddy? Man, I'm pulling up on you. Baby's strained relationship with Lil Wayne had previously come up in the show's interviews with Rick Ross and Trick Daddy, and he wasn't having that. Man got more CMB tattoos than Stunner, dude. You dig? They got each other tattooed on you this. You dig? And, and to me, I, t I take that personally. Birdman stormed out after his rant, ultimately later apologizing for his actions. But lesson learned, don't get on his bad side. Y'all finished or y'all done? I ain't got no more talking. Let's rock. All right. Number eight, Bayhive mistakes Rachel Ray for Rachel Roy. The Bayhive is the one fandom that doesn't play. After Beyonce dropped Lemonade in April 2016, fans started speculating wildly, trying to figure out who Becky with the good hair was from Sorry. You better call Becky with the good hair. There'd been rumors that Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce with designer Rachel Roy, and that's a rumor Roy herself fueled by posting a pic on Instagram with the caption, good hair, don't care. Fans began spamming her account with lemon and bee emojis, but the real kicker came when fans confused Rachel Roy with Rachel Ray, the celebrity chef. All right, now when does it get explosive? Poor Rachel Ray took things in stride, making light of the situation by posting a picture of a chicken recipe with a caption telling fans to make it a family affair. He better call Becky with the good hair. Number seven, Jesse Hughes. In November 2015, tragedy struck when the Bataclan Theater in Paris became the target of a terrorist attack, leading to the deaths of 89 people at the venue. At the time of the attack, the band Eagles of Death Metal had been performing. None of the band members were harmed, but fast forward a few months to when frontman Jesse Hughes made headlines by publicly claiming the attacks were an inside job. Out of respect for the police still investigating, it, I won't make a definite statement, but I'll say it seems rather obvious that they had a reason not to show up. He said he'd felt that something was not right with security inside the venue that night, and that he'd seen Muslims celebrating the attack in the streets. His comments were not well received, and he was barred from returning to the Bataclan on the anniversary of the attack. Number 6. Kid Cudi's Beef with Drake and Kanye Back in September 2016, Kid Cudi took to Twitter to sound off on rap artists who use Ghost Riders. He name-checked Kanye West and Drake in the process, and said that they don't care about him. His supposed mentor Kanye fired back during a concert saying, I birthed you, but later backtracked and wished Cudi the best. Kid Cudi, don't never mention your name. I 
Drake, on the other hand, responded with a brutal diss track, Two Birds, One Stone, and made low blows attacking Cuddy's mental health. You were the man on the moon, now you just go through your faces, life of the angry and famous. Unfortunately, that turned out to be oddly prophetic, as Cuddy later checked into rehab for depression and suicidal thoughts. From rehab, Cuddy clapped back, urging Drizzy to say it to his face. We'll certainly be watching in 2017 to see if this feud continues. I got enemies, got a lot of enemies, got a lot of people trying to drain me of this energy. Number five, Corey Feldman's Today Show performances. Just so you know, if you try to stop us or vamp out in any way, then I'll stake you without even thinking twice about it. In the 80s, he was known as one of the two Coreys, but in recent years, Corey Feldman's fame has faded. In 2016, he tried to make a comeback by taking a stab at a music career, releasing his fifth studio album, Angelic to the Core. He appeared on NBC's Today Show in September to promote the album by performing the song Go For It, with special help from his angels. To call the performance bizarre would be an understatement, and the video, of course, went viral, with Corey taking to Twitter to defend himself. To capitalize on his notoriety, the show invited him back to perform Take a Stand a month later. I would lay down my life just to give the world one more chance. We need peace right now. We need love somehow. Number four, iPhone goes wireless. We believe in a wireless future. One thing everyone loves about their iPhone is having your whole iTunes collection right there in your pocket. Apple made it harder for us to enjoy this simple pleasure in 2016 when they announced that the new iPhone 7 would not have a headphone jack. Rumors about this had been swirling for quite some time before the September 7th release date, but consumers' worst nightmares came true when it was confirmed. And of course, the new wireless AirPods deliver incredible sound. Instead of the traditional jack, iPhone 7 users have to use wireless headphones or Apple's lightning port. And just like the phone, neither option is cheap. Considering how iconic Apple's white earbuds have become, we're still scratching our heads about this move. But maybe we'll get over it? It is a breakthrough design. The AirPods deliver truly an Apple magical experience. Number three, Kesha's legal dispute with Sony. Looking for some trouble tonight. Take my hand, I'll show you the wild side. Since 2014, Kesha has been involved in a legal battle with her record label Sony and Dr. Luke, one of the biggest pop producers around. Alleging that he'd sexually and emotionally abused her over the course of their working relationship, Kesha sued Dr. Luke and later filed a lawsuit against Sony, asking to be freed from her recording contract so she would not have to work with him anymore. But we kick them to the curb unless they look like Mick Jagger. 2016 saw Kesha face several setbacks, with the judge denying her request for an injunction and dismissing most of her claims against Dr. Luke, leaving her career at a standstill. Of course, Kesha was supported by fans, with the hashtag Free Kesha trending on social media and pop giants like Kelly Clarkson, Taylor Swift, Adele, and Lady Gaga also offering their support. Number 2. Kanye 2016 was a rough year for Yeezy. Starting with the pushback he felt due to the delays on The Life of Pablo, he stayed in the headlines pretty much all year, whether it was due to his feud with Taylor Swift over a lyric in his song Famous. I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex Why I made that bitch famous. His Twitter fight with Wiz Khalifa and Amber Rose, hashtag fingers in the booty ass bitch, and for the rants he spouted over the course of his St. Pablo tour, a tour he cancelled altogether in November. His tour rants ran the gamut, he claimed Jay-Z had hired hitmen to kill him, Jay -Z, I know you got killers. Please don't send them out my head. and admitted he would have voted for Donald Trump, had he voted at all. But if I would have voted, I would have voted on Trump. In late November, Kanye was committed to a mental hospital, perhaps explaining some of his erratic behavior. We are all great people. We are all equal. But sometimes we be playing the politics too much and forgetting who we are. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Heard you in the mood for a little milkshake. Welcome to the Dairy Duchess Love Factory. Where's the love? Lack of understanding leading us away from unity. Where's the love? Number one, all the musician deaths. I, I wish you could swim. 
by far our saddest entry, this one also had the most impact on us in 2016. Throughout the year, we saw musician after musician pass away from a multitude of causes, like cancer as in the case of David Bowie, to an accidental overdose for Prince, to heart failure for Natalie Cole. Whether it was an icon like Merle Haggard or Leonard Cohen, stars of years past like Vanity and Pete Burns, or relative newcomers like Christina Grimmie. You're not the one I'm supposed to love, but this is more than just a crush. Each death has affected the artist's fans, who turn to their music for comfort. Numerous award shows perform tributes in honor of these fallen musicians, making 2016 a time for mourning and reflection. Hallelujah. So, do you agree with our list? Which 2016 music moment made you scratch your head? For more newsworthy top 10s published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I ain't sorry. No, no, hell no.